So my next guest is a best-selling author, a popular Spanish language radio and TV talk show host, and a former Roman Catholic priest who was dubbed Father Oprah until pictures of him cuddling and kissing a woman surfaced in tabloids. They sent the Catholic Church into just an uproar. Although this forbidden love forced him to leave the Catholic Church, he's risen above the controversy and continues to preach as a married Episcopalian priest. Please welcome Father Alberto Coutier. Andy, thank you. Thank you, Father. So glad that you're here. Now, before those photos um, surfaced, tell us what your life was like. Well, I was a busy parish priest, but I was always, or I should say since 99, a little bit over 11 years, mm -hmm. I hosted television shows, much like you do here, mm -hmm. Wendy, and uh, also radio. Uh, I wrote six columns in the press every week. So I was very much involved in media work and parish work, combined all of that and spent a lot of time really serving people as a self-help advice type priest. And, and you were based out of Miami. Out of Miami. But it went all over the world. Yes, was, uh, and over 22 countries. That that's were saying, right. Yeah. That's right. That's big. So the Mexican magazine that published the pictures, they published 25 photos of the father and the woman in the pictures. How'd that feel? It was very strange because I had no clue. First of all, who was following me? Was who the was the taking the pictures? Was the beach crowded that day? That there was no day? one there. Oh. Uh, first of all, you got to understand in Miami when it's 60 degrees, it's like. 20 below, right? Right, <laughs> nobody goes to the beach. Uh -huh. Nobody goes to the beach when it's 60. Look at this one right and, here. Uh, yeah. Wow. Well, that, where were you there? That was not on the beach, no. Yeah, that no? Was, that, that's near the beach at a restaurant. Yes. And, um, well, congratulations. Thank because you. Um, you ended up marrying the woman in the picture. She's been yes. your wife for, what, a year now? Over a year, yeah. Over a year. How did your congregation react to those pictures? It was interesting. There were some people who said, what's the big deal? These are two consenting adults, they love each other, and what's wrong with that? This is the 21st century. Others, of course, said, oh, but he's supposed to be celibate, he made these promises. Well, that was true, and that was my dilemma, if you will. Yes. And uh, I've been writing about that dilemma, my book will come out soon. But the, the dilemma really has to do with a man who loves God very much and wants to serve God. I was 22 years, you know, seminary, pastoral work. Yes. 22 years into that before this happened but also someone who happened to fall in love. And nobody tells you that because you've made these promises to be a priest and to be a good priest, oh. that somehow one day you may also fall in love and want to do what everybody else does, oh. to have a family and do all these things. So uh, for me, it was not something that I kind of chose to do deliberately. I didn't want to hurt it the church happen. or damage the church. Things just happened. Was your wife a part of your congregation? She was when I first met her. Uh -huh. uh, I, when I first saw her, uh, and our eyes locked, it was like a magnet. You oh, know, how cute uh, you guys look. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. There she is, yes. Can't deny that love. She's beautiful. Yeah, so so she was part of you, so you'd be up there in, in the pulpit. Imagine me preaching, right? Preaching. And all of a sudden you connect your eyes with someone that, oh. you know, you, you, you really don't want to look at. <laughs> yes. So, you know, you, you look down, you look here, but yes. then you end up looking anyway. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it's not so easy. But uh, the truth of the matter is it's a struggle. And it's a struggle that as human beings, we shouldn't have to choose between serving God and, and loving uh, another human being and giving your life in love to both things. Because I, I at least, I learned from many rabbis, yes. ministers, pastors, friends of mine, that they could do both things perfectly well. Not only that, but there are priests who have been caught doing way worse things than falling in love with the lady in the front pew. Yeah. So... My wife didn't even sit in the front pew. She <laughs> used to... She was hard to get. She would sit all the way she toward the back. She didn't want to look at you either. <laughs> she felt it. Mm -hmm. um, but, but so many of your parishioners were quite angry with you? Some of them, I guess, would be upset at the fact that I couldn't come out publicly and say, hey, I'm in love. Yes. Uh, and it's almost like now when I look back, I think, gosh, I wish I would have done this 10 years ago. You yeah. Know, I would have just said it. But it's not that easy because you love both things. Yes. You love ministering to God and you're taught as a Roman Catholic that this is the only way to be a priest. Well, Catholic priests are not allowed to have these feelings, so... Uh, well, it, you have the feelings, well, but, you know, you, you can't really deal with you, them. Right, you can't let them out. That, that must have been really difficult suppressing them. It is. Uh, at the same time, you learn. Uh, you know, you exercise, you pray harder, you do the best thing that you can, yeah. but none of that replaces an intimate relationship with someone that you love, and so eventually you have to make a decision. So you were forced out of the Catholic Church... I guess, is that how you'd phrase it? You forced out? I didn't feel forced out. Last May? I was basically told, you know, you got to make a decision between loving her or serving God. 
And I said, no, I'm going to continue serving God as a priest in a church that doesn't have this rule as the imposition to, 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 to serve God. And, and that's so that's what I did. You became an Episcopalian priest. Yes. I, I think ideologically, I was an Episcopalian for a long time. Yes. Because a lot of people say, oh, Roman Catholic, that's, uh, you know, Episcopals are like Catholic light. Well, not really true. We have our own identity, <laughs> you know, we've, but we've been around for many centuries and yes. didn't start in the 16th century with Henry VIII either. You know, we had, a, uh, the Church of England had its own identity. It has some of the Catholic traditions, some of the Protestant Reformation traditions. And it really brings people together, if you will. I believe it's a 21st century church. Hold that thought, Father. We're going to take a break, but when we come back, we're going to talk with the Father about married life and what the future is holding for our Father, Alberto. We're back, and I'm sitting with Father Alberto Coutier, everybody, who was a Roman Catholic priest, kind of forced out of the church after uh, he fell in love with a parishioner who happens to now be his wife of um, almost a year. That's right. No, a little over a, a little year. over yeah. a year. We made the one year mark. <laughs> Look at that. All right. Uh, how how is it living with a woman? Well, you have a lot less. You have a lot less space in the closet. I'll yes, tell you that. But you don't need much uh, space. I don't really need much space. I have two pairs of shoes. I can't count the number of shoes my wife has. Oh. And it always seems like she doesn't have enough. <laughs> You're always looking for more. It's a girl thing, Father. I know. Don't try to understand that one. <laughs> So, uh, um, and, and regarding your own mother, uh, yes. does she live in Miami? She does, and I have two sisters, so I, I've been surrounded by women all my life, believe me. Okay, what did your own uh, mother say? My mom and my sisters were very supportive from the yeah. beginning. What they were interested in is that I was in love and that I wanted to truly be happy in, yeah. in what you know, God was asking me to do at this stage of my life. I think that, you know, when I first told them about being a priest, I was a DJ in high school. So I used to what? play music, yeah. <laughs> so I think I shocked them. That time, I think I shocked them again, unfortunately. I didn't mean to. But uh, the interesting thing is my mother's Roman Catholic, and she continues to love her church, and I continue to love the Roman Catholic Church. Yes. But certainly, uh, she also understands my dilemma. Yes. You know, that if I wanted to continue serving God as a priest, it wasn't possible there. Well, my mother and father live in Miami, and when they found out you were coming on the show, they were just over the moon. They said, tell you how you doing. So, <laughs> they, how you doing, <laughs> father? <laughs> um, are you happier now, father? I am. I, am. I feel that uh, as a married priest, there's a lot of things that I can understand now about people, and there's a lot of things that I can help with that maybe in the past uh, I spoke about just through theory, if you will. Yes. Now there's theory and practice in my life. Uh, one more question, and then we're going to let you go. Have any of your old parishioners from the Roman Catholic Church followed you over to your new church? Some have, and some people just did it because ideologically they also believed in the things that the Episcopal Church represents. Gotcha. Openness to everyone, welcoming to everyone. So Life is good. Yeah. And then you become happier than ever. Good Thank for you. Wendy. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. This is Father Alberto Gutierrez, everybody.